Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Calvin Jang, and I'm the CFO of Content Box. My presentation today is called From the Internet Age to the Blockchain Era. My story starts with CastBox, which is a popular podcast platform, and our transition to Content Box, which is our new blockchain project. And I'll also share some of the lessons and insights that we learned along our journey. So some of you may recognize this as the profit meme. So in the internet age, this is typically the roadmap you'll follow if you want to become a successful startup. Step one, build a high quality app. Step two, get a lot of users. And then bam, profit. Uh, step three, usually you will get acquired or you IPO. <coughs> And so we started CastBox back in 2016, and we wanted to follow the tried and true roadmap from the previous slide. So since we were founded in 2016, uh, in a little over than two years, we've already become a leading global podcast platform. Currently, we have over 16 million global users. We're in over 175 countries, our app is available in over 70 languages. Our audio content library is over 50 million, and we've won numerous awards, such as Google's best app, uh, most entertaining best apps uh, in 2016 and Google's 2017 Global Android Excellence app. So this is a quick look at CastBox's investment history. As you can see, we're well on our way to step three. Since we've been founded, we've already completed four fundraising rounds. And our investors include some of the most renowned PE firms in, uh, in the world. IDG, SIG, Qiming, Jin Fund. And if we continue on our growth trajectory, we could easily complete a C or a D round and potentially IPO in the future. So it was around the end of last year that we started thinking about monetization in the podcast industry. Historically, this has always been a slow and very difficult process. For a lot of podcasters, one of the most common ways you monetize is by including audio ads inside your podcast, something like sponsorships. And just to give you an idea of how difficult this is, to produce a high-quality podcast app it may cost about $1,000 for all the production fees. And then add in $500 for the marketing and the promotions, and you have $1,500 per episode. If we assume just an average CPM, it's very conservative. Just to break even, you need at least 75,000 listens. It's a lot of listens. So we started thinking about how blockchain can help podcasters monetize. And we thought that a token-based economy would be a great way because that gives podcasters another way to make money. So while we were thinking about this, we took a step back and realized that this wasn't a problem that just podcasters faced. Take YouTube, for example. I'm sure everybody's aware that if you're a content creator on YouTube, you're probably struggling to make a living. YouTube reaps huge advertising revenues from all the free content that's provided by users. Or think about music artists. They have to deal with record labels, copyright and licensing agencies, and distribution platforms like Spotify. Each one is an intermediary that will take a cut of the pie. So even if you're a popular music artist, you may only make 10 or 15 cents for every dollar of revenue. We don't think that content creators are adequately rewarded for their efforts. And I would argue that just as important as content creators are the content consumers. Take Reddit, for example. The whole concept behind Reddit is to share interesting content, and then users from the community will upvote or downvote. <clears throat> uh, something that we call curation. 
So other examples of curation include uh, commenting, having a lively discussion, reporting spam. These are all actions that the user does for free. And they're doing it on their time, uh, on their own time, which we think is a very limited resource, and therefore it's a valuable resource. So we think that content consumers should also be rewarded for their efforts. And aside from content creators and content consumers, there's also content platforms that compete aggressively with one another. So this is a page from Spotify's IPO prospectus. And if you take a look at the red box, what this is saying is that in 2017, for every dollar of Spotify's revenue, about 80% goes to cost of revenues. And what do you think is the biggest component of cost of revenues? It's copyright costs. So as platforms compete with each other for high quality content, this increases the copyright costs. And then this cost is transferred onto the users. So users will end up having to watch longer ads or paying uh, higher subscription fees. This led to the birth of Content Box. All of the challenges that content creators, content consumers, and content platforms face, that's what we're trying to solve. We're building an ecosystem based off of blockchain technology to bring you the digital content industry of tomorrow. So I'd like to go through some of the key stakeholders in the Content Box ecosystem, and I'll give you a quick overview of how each one will benefit from Content Box. So obviously, the content creators, they'll be able to be rewarded every time their content is consumed. That way, they'll be able to create much more diverse and high-quality content. Content creators will be connected directly with content consumers so that business transactions will be streamlined. And of course, all of the intermediaries uh, will be cut out so that they don't take such a huge cut of the revenues anymore. For content consumers, as I mentioned in the Reddit slide, they'll be able to get rewarded for all of their efforts, like sharing, voting, commenting, everything that I mentioned earlier. And they'll be able to earn tokens. For content platforms or distributors, they'll be able to build a shared user and content ledger so that this will lower their traffic acquisition and IP costs. That way, they can focus more on improving the user experience instead of competing with another over copyrights. And also, advertisers will benefit. They will be able to use a shared advertisement ledger so that you pay based on the actual ad viewership instead of some opaque methodology given by the distributors. This will bring a, bring a lot of transparency into this industry. So what exactly is Content Box? I'll start with our mission statement. So we want to create a unified payout system, a shared user pool, and a shared content pool for the digital content industry. Now, there's going to be three components of Content Box, and each component will address one piece of our mission. First, the unified payment solution. This is a payment solution that will support multi-party contingent payments. And think about it like this. Imagine I want to make a donation on Twitch to my favorite streamer. I have to use PayPal. And then if I want to watch a video or a movie on YouTube, I have to use Google Wallet to pay for it. And then if I want to buy my Spotify subscription, I have to pay with a credit or a debit card. What if there was one payment solution that could pay for all of these purchases? I would not only save time, and it would be more convenient, but I would also save on all of the transaction fees. This is the unified payment solution. We will also have a unique identity system. So you can think of this as a Google or Facebook login, but because it's on a blockchain, no one company will own all of your data anymore. We are also trying to add a privacy layer on top of that because obviously you don't want everyone to know all of your personal information. And so the reason for this is that 
all of the users, they will be able to interact within the content box ecosystem easily. And this is the shared user pool. And then finally, we're going to have a turnkey solution. Now, what is this? For content creators that don't have a tech or a development background, they'll be able to create their own content platforms. So you can think of this as like a WordPress for bloggers. And by having all the stakeholders in the ecosystem, they will be able to access a shared content pool. The biggest advantage that we have at Content Box is something we call the network effect. So what is the network effect? It's the fact that we already have our first partner application with CastBox. If you'll recall, CastBox already has over 16 million users. And all of the content creators and consumers on CastBox, they'll be able to earn rewards, like I mentioned earlier. And this will showcase all of the benefits of the Content Box ecosystem. And so because we have a large user base, this will attract more digital content uh, developers for different mediums, such as video or music. So imagine a new video platform called VideoTube or a new music platform called Listenify. All of the users from CastBox will be able to flow seamlessly to these new platforms. And that way, content creators on the new platforms will be able to access these users immediately. They'll be able to interact with them directly. So as more users join the Content Box ecosystem, this will attract more developers. And as developers create more applications, this will attract even more users, creating what we call a virtuous cycle. And this is the network effect that I'm talking about. So now I'd like to share some of the lessons that we learned while working on the Content Box project. No matter who we talk to, whether it's investors, advisors, vendors, partners, whoever, everybody immediately gave us instant credibility because we already had a successful application with CastBox. Because of CastBox's success, we were able to show that we have a strong management team with a proven ability to execute. And so that also gives credibility to Content Box. We've also had a very smooth fundraise. We only did a private presale, and we started this back in April, uh, beginning of April, and we hit our soft cap in about a month, and then in a little bit uh, less than a month afterwards, we hit a hard cap. So we had no need to do a public ICO. And while talking to investors, they were much more comfortable investing because of the credibility that we established with CastBox. PR is also much easier because the fact that we can combine our project with CastBox, we have a much more interesting story. So to give you an example, at the beginning of June, we launched a crypto wallet within our CastBox application. So you will be able to trade ETH and our box tokens directly within the app. And when we pitched this story to media, they were very happy to pick it up because uh, it combines interesting projects, podcasts, and crypto together. And finally, immediate implementation. This is the cooperation between Content Box and CastBox because a lot of our engineers are, based in both, uh, are both based in Beijing, so they're able to work side by side. So any bugs that come out or any feedback from users, any updates, they can be done very quickly, very fast, immediately. <laughs> and so <laughs> we, we come back to this slide. I think we really have a chance to do something big here at Content Box. From the internet age to the blockchain era, you can see that we've already made a drastic change to our roadmap. We still need a high quality app. We still need to get a lot of users, but step three changed. Instead of uh, IPOing or 
uh, getting acquired, we created a new blockchain. And this is because we have CastBox to help jumpstart our blockchain project. And so now, instead of having IPO as a goal, we have a much bigger goal, is to create a better digital content industry. That's my presentation for today. Thank you.